From TCT 15, six papers will be simultaneously published in Jack, counting the accompanying editorial comments and research letters. That number grows to 10. And we are here to talk about the research letter that will be posted online ahead of print in Jack. It's Systemic Pharmacokinetics of Everolimus Saluted from the Absorb Bioresorbable Vascular Scaffold. This is an Absorb 3 substudy. And I am with Dr. David Rizek, who is founder and medical director of the Scottsdale Heart Group in my favorite part of the world, home, Scottsdale. Arizona. First off, some background. Remind us about the bioresorbable vascular scaffold that you're studying here. Well, up till now, uh, all of the stents that we use are, are metal uh, drug eluting stents. They have drug and polymer on them, and the, the, the drug uh, will elute in about a month, but the polymer is a durable polymer for the most part, at least what we use in the United States, and it's a metal stent. So it pretty much stays in the blood vessel forever. The question we've asked over the last several years is, do we really need a stent to last forever? Uh, do we need that scaffolding uh, benefit of a stent forever? And, and uh, in truth, we probably only need it temporarily, say for three or four months, because if you performed a balloon angioplasty, for instance, we know that the vessel will recoil for some period of time, and that's when you need the stent. But after that period of recoil, uh, a stent is no longer needed, and that critical period of recoil is, say, three or four months. So you really don't need a stent forever, and so you, we've asked ourselves as a community of scientists and physicians, can we develop a stent that melts, that goes away, that completely is resorbable, and that's what the bioabsorbable vascular scaffold is. It is a temporary scaffold. It consists or is made up of lactic acid, so it goes through a cascade of chemical reactions that ultimately converts it to carbon dioxide and water, so the drug goes away, the polymer goes away, and ultimately the scaffold or stent goes away as well, leaving the vessel free of that metal cage which right. constrains the vessel. So describe how this pharmacokinetic analysis was performed. Whenever a, whenever a new drug eluting stent comes on the market, we want to know that the drug elutes in a safe way. In other words, are the levels of the drug that elute into the system uh, off the stent, are they at safe levels? So uh, we uh, took a population of patients and we uh, uh, implanted one of these coronary scaffolds, these bioabsorbable vascular scaffolds, and then for uh, the next week or so, we measured the concentration of drug in the body. You want to make certain first that, you know, this is an immunosuppressive drug, Everolimus. You want to make sure you're not getting sustained right. immunosuppressive levels. So we measured it, and we measured the peak of the, uh, of the concentration and then sort of the decay of the concentration uh, over the period of uh, the next several days. You probably should describe the patients. There were 12 enrolled who all remained in this PK substudy through 30 days. So were they just typical patients? I think they were pretty typical patients. R remember, this was done at a time where there were a limited number of sizes of these right. bioabsorbable vascular scaffolds. So it wasn't an all-comers population like some of the trials, and it w was never intended to be Correct. that. It's a very, very uh, prescribed uh, group of patients in whom we could place these BVS devices, and they consented to have their blood drawn. So there were a number of blood draws in the first 24 to 48 hours, and then fewer blood draws over the course of the week. So what did you find? Well, what we want to know is that the levels of this drug off BVS are not into immunosuppression levels. Uh, and although it was short-lived, the maximum level of the drug got just over that immunosuppressive level, which is about three nanograms, uh, three nanograms per milliliter. And it creeped up just over that, but then pretty rapidly dropped off. So for the, the week that drug could be detected, it was not in the immunosuppressive range, but rather in a therapeutic range 
to, to treat the vessel, to, to have an anti-proliferative effect on the vessel. Now, there's another important piece to this. We asked ourselves two things. Is this safe? Well, yeah, it appears to be safe because there were not sustained immunosuppressive levels. Like I said, it, it creeped over the immunosuppressive level, but then rapidly dropped off. But there's another important piece to this. To what database can we compare this? So we compared it to a similar trial done with the Zions cobalt chromium everonimus eluting stent. And what we found is that it's pretty similar uh, to uh, Zions. Perhaps the levels for a very short period of time were a little bit higher than what we saw with Zions. But remember, these are two different studies. Right. This was done in a different patient population at a different time. But the decline of, uh, uh, of the pharmacologic level was very similar to Zions. So when we ask ourselves, is this safe, uh, we can conclude that this is Zions-like in its pharmacokinetics, and Zions was considered to be uh, very safe in this regard. And I think that's the principal finding. The principal findings can be summarized as, uh, in and of itself, BVS does not appear to pose a threat in terms of the, uh, the, the drug levels in the body, and they are very much science-like in the decay of the drug uh, over time. I guess I would conclude with the fact that the systemic PK or pharmacokinetic characteristics of Everolimus on this BVS uh, device are predictable. Uh, and it has dose proportional behavior. That's the important thing. We can predict uh, how this is going to peak and then drop off, and it appears to be at very safe levels and very comparable uh, to uh, other stents, such as the Zion stent, to which we ended up comparing it in this, uh, in this trial. So this is the research letter that we've been talking about, so please go on online because if you're looking at this, that means that the embargo has passed. So please, there are, as I said, six papers simultaneously published in Jack, and there's also going to be some in, in Jack Interventions. Take a look at all of that online. For Cardiosource World News, I am Executive Editor Rick McGuire.